Well, I'm Dr. Bob. I think everybody knows me. If you don't, I'm Dr. Bob McCauley. I'm um, here in Lansing. I own the Watershed Wellness Center, uh, a couple miles west of the airport. I've uh, been in business a little over 30 years. I've been doing um, this, uh, you know, the raw food lifestyle and healthy for well over 25 years now. I used to be over on uh, West Saginaw, um, across from Kroger by Kreitz Road for 17 years, and then I moved over here now. Um, I, my business keeps getting bigger and bigger, so I've been blessed in that way. And uh, we took a couple minutes off today to go get outside and watch the the uh, near full eclipse of the sun. So that was kind of cool. And um, I don't know if you guys saw it. We had some kind of, kind of glasses, we, you know, and you could see this thing. And it was really amazing. It's the best one I've seen in my lifetime and ever, including Lansing. So it was pretty cool. So um, I am a, 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 a certified nutritional consultant. Um, and I'm a certified master herbalist and a naturopathic doctor. And, um, but I always tell people mostly what I know about health is, um, by experience. And I think that's really the way you want to learn, um, uh, your, you know, about health and about really knowing things is experience it. Don't just go out there and read a bunch of books. And because you can see the people through the years that do read books and only only read books because they don't look that good. They don't look that healthy. Um, and that's, you know, that's what you want to do. I'm, I'm 66 years old now. Um, I feel great. I don't have any arthritis. I still run a six minute mile. I've always loved to run. And um, it's just what I do. It's, uh, you know, I integrated this, uh, you know, the raw food lifestyle into my life. And so that's what I've been doing all these years. And um, it's not, uh, you know, health, I always tell people is very, very easy to understand, but it's extremely difficult to actually do it because you have to change your lifestyle. And that's what it's about, all about changing lifestyles. Um, so I'm also, I'm the author of many books on health, eight books actually. And, uh, some of them I have in front of me. Um, this is one of my more recent books. That's the seven secrets of great health. I have a seven component health protocol. Um, and I'll go over that briefly what it is. Uh, here's another one of my books. Um, it's the, uh, the, the temple he was referring to with his body, which are the words of our Lord, but basically, um, it tells you why you want to eat a raw food lifestyle. And I, as I always like to say, uh, God grew an apple, uh, but we made a frying pan and you cannot improve on God's creation. You can make it taste better. Uh, you can make an apple pie and, um, and there, and you know, it's more delicious than a regular, just apple, but it's not healthy because the difference between a cooked apple, a raw apple and a cooked apple is a, a raw apple is what is, and a cooked apple is what was. And they're really not, uh, once you cook a food of any kind, an apple or a carrot or anything, that's not the same food at all. You can say, well, it tastes like it, but oh, it's totally changed. All the enzymes are gone if you fully cook it. And um, and that's the that's the really the heart of the food. That's, that's where it gets its energy. Um, and so that's why, you know, you don't want to cook your foods because you're basically oxidizing them. And you're taking away their their energy force. And by that, I mean these enzymes. Um, you know, if you look at a raw food uh, through Carillion photography, uh, which is, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a special type of photography that actually looks at the aura around things. And if you look at a, a raw food, you'll see it's colorful. If you look at a, at a cooked food, you'll see that it, the color is gone. Um, and uh, you'll see that it's... Uh, uh, kind of a brownish color, like a rock um, or like uh, a piece of wood, um, you know, and uh, I'll say the same thing for a tree. You know, um, you know, I'm, I'm sitting behind a wooden desk here in my home, but, um, you know, it's and it's a beautiful wooden desk, but a tree is a tree. And when you cut it down to make a desk, you haven't improved that tree at all. You got a beautiful desk, but uh, and there's nothing wrong with it. But I'm just saying you don't have the real essence of what that was, that life force that was in that wood, that was in that tree when it began with to begin with. So it's all about the energy that you're going to see in there. And also you when you cook a food, whether it's a carrot, an apple or anything else, you have uh, uh, chemically scrambled that food. And, and there's an organic chemical structure to any kind of a food. 
Um, and once you cook it, that's gone. You, it's not the same food at all. It, it may taste a little, a carrot might taste like a cooked uh, a, a carrot still, but it's not the same food at all. It's just, you've taken an alkaline rejuvenating substance and you've turned it, uh, or food, uh, organic, uh, alkalizing, rejuvenating, and you've turned it into mere sustenance. And it's enough to keep you alive a week, a month, a year, but uh, it's and it's not going to rejuvenate the body. It's going to keep you alive. It's basically ca calories, and you can get some nutrition from it. There's no doubt about it. But this is why we decline. We decline. You know, they always say people get old, they get sick, and eventually they die. Well, that's not true. Uh, what what is true is that people get old and they keep living on the wrong diet, and that diet leads to disease. And then they die from some kind of a disease. It could be anything from cancer to uh, to arthritis, uh, you know, advanced arthritis. People say people put in the death certificate. I don't know if they still do that, but he died of old age. People don't die of old age. They die of a disease. Their organs give out and or their heart. They have a heart attack. That's the most common form of death. That's, you know, that uh, that we have as far as a kind of kind of a disease heart attack by far in the whole world. Uh, and second to that is cancer. So, um, but people just eat the wrong foods. They clog up their arteries with, um, you know, by, by, the, by putting the wrong things into their body. And then maybe they have a heart attack or they just don't give themselves the nutrients that they need to keep the health, heart healthy. Um, I just had a full uh, medical exam and it goes on for, I think, uh, 15, 20 pages. Um, I had that done in Taiwan. And it was just uh, about a month ago and it came back almost perfect. You know, you see these little anomalies, even the things that came out while well, you're out of the range here. I mean, I'm a few points out of the range, not like uh, it should have been a hundred and you were at 500 or something like that. Or it should have been, it should have been 50 and you were at four. It wasn't anywhere. I was right in the range of where you're supposed to be. And I, it's, you know, I'll just tell you like all my friends, they're all my age now. They're all carpenters and builders. And a lot, so many of them, and a lot of them can't work at all anymore, because uh, they um, they have arthritis, and their backs hurt, and their hands hurt, and they can't use their hands. And uh, I again, I don't have any of that. I've been lucky enough to, to have any kind of accidents in my life that would be crippling to me in any way. But uh, but that's what it's all all about is re oh, constantly rejuvenating that body through raw fruits and vegetables. Um, I remind people, uh, going back to the uh, book on, you know, on, you know, the temp honoring the temple of God. That's your temple, your body. Uh, I'm a Christian. I'm a Catholic, and uh, and I uh, <clears throat> um, I really live that lifestyle. And um, like people say, what do you eat? Well, I don't eat any breakfast. I haven't eaten breakfast in many many years. I drink water. I get up in the morning, and people do not do the right thing. You got to get up in the morning and drink water. That's what you got to do. You got to do that every day. I drink alkaline ionized water. Uh, I sell it by the gallon at work. And uh, here's my book, uh, my best selling book on water. Uh, it's on water. My best, it's in its third edition, Miraculous Properties of Ionized Water, The Definitive Guide to the World's Healthiest Substance. And it, this is the thir third edition. It, I've got a lot more information in there. We've learned a lot more about um, um, ionized water now um, than we than we knew in the beginning. Like we we knew maybe it was suspect there was hydrogen in it, and now we know for sure that there's hydrogen in alkalinized ionized water. And you will find this type of water throughout nature. Um, and there's a guy who wrote a book, and I know Cricket's familiar with it, uh, "The Fourth Phase of Water" by Gerald Pollack. He's a PhD. Um, and, um, I've interviewed him on my radio program years ago. And, um, and so, um, I, you know, that's a perfect example of how he says in there, alkaline ionized water is found everywhere in nature. Um, and that's, that's always the case. And I, I always suspected it. So Bob, um, one of the questions we had ahead of time was, yeah. um, drinking alkaline water yeah with an acid stomach um mm -hmm. how can you speak to that absolutely so i've got a chapter in that in my book okay and it's a good question and i've gotten it many times um in the past 
uh, aren't you just destroying your stomach acid? Well, there's a lot of components to digestion that you want to know about. Um, but first of all, uh, um, I'll say, obviously, as I said, you get up in the morning, you drink water. Well, I drink, you know, I always got a glass of water. I drink a couple, a couple of these in the morning before I do anything else. I drink about one liter of water before I eat anything, which is around noon, one o'clock. That's when I, the first time I eat. So, um, you know, your stomach acid um, is really occurs when you're eating. You, the idea that um, your stomach is always this extremely low uh, pH of, let's say, 2.5 with the hydrochloric acid in there. Um, and uh, it's just not that way. When you when you uh, there's many components to the. Um, uh, to the to eating there's chewing uh, the mastication of your food there's chewing and when, when you start chewing your food um, then you uh, you start producing enzymes um, it, not only in your mouth you got salivase which is where we get the word saliva there's amylase is another one that's being created in here um, these are digestive enzymes I always take a digestive enzyme every time I eat I take a capsule. It's got a full spectrum. I sell one, but I take a full spectrum digestive enzyme when I eat. Of course, I always take probiotics. We'll get to that. But um, you you should be producing all these, you know, lipase. Lipase breaks down uh, fat. So there's all these enzymes going on. Well, uh, as you chew, uh, your your body is producing these digestive enzymes in your in your mouth and in and as you chew them up and in your lower, your upper stomach, and you're also produ producing hydrochloric acid. Now, hydrochloric acid in its purest, purest form is uh, is a pH of about 2, 2.5. Um, by the way, that's also the pH of Coca-Cola. So that tells you why you don't want to put any kind of substance like that in your body. Um, and, you know, I tell people all the time, just remember, I mean, there's no uh, Coca-Cola fountain there's a there's a water fountain or there's water waterfalls and there's water in nature there's no coca-cola in nature and um and think about it there's no you know there's no pizza tree i wish there was i love pizza but i don't eat it um because it's not healthy and there's no dorito tree and there's no potato chip tree but there's an apple tree and there's a cherry tree and uh there's there's a guava tree and uh and there's a banana plant but these things, uh, these other foods that you see on the shelf, these processed foods just don't exist in nature. So going back to the, the uh, stomach. Now, the idea that your body is always, your stomach is always at a pH of 2.5. That means like, for instance, if you were to take your fingers, okay, and put them into your stomach, they would just come back and they would be gone because they were just beaten up by the acid. That's not what the case is. So, um, so. Uh, what you want to do again is, um, you know, uh, when you eat your food, do it properly. You know, they always say chew your juice and, and juice your food in the sense that you should be when you're just drinking a juice, you should do chewing. But you should chew because it's one of the reasons I don't recommend people chew gum because you're chewing. And that's part of the digestive tract uh, the process, I should say. And so um, the main thing you want to remember about that is I never drink water with my meals. And I, of course, I drink the right kind of water. I don't drink distilled water or purified water or reverse osmosis. Those are the same thing. Um, I drink, you know, alkaline ionized water. And if I can't get that, then I drink uh, spring water. And actually, I take a little something called hydrogen stick and you put it into the water and shake it up. And that alkalizes the water and helps um, bring it up a little bit uh bring bring the ph up of the water so when i when i'm traveling um that's what i take and i put it in all my jars and all my bottles and everything and uh, um so that's what i do so now um having said that um <clears throat> um i never drink water around meal time so uh, what you want to do is i drink a big tall glass of water like this about a half an hour before i eat so that i'm not really thirsty okay and um, then um, 
I, uh, I, in, I never drink water with my meal because you're, you're just diluting the digestive process. You're, you're negating the, hydro, uh, the, the hydrochloric acid and you're washing out all these enzymes. You're washing all these probiotics, the friendly bacteria, which I always take a probiotic with every time uh, I eat. I never miss it. Uh, if I do, it's because I just don't have one. But I always have probiotics with me. I'm really quite a health fanatic in the sense that when I go traveling, I've got a shower filter with me. I, I take I take off the head of the shower in the hotel and put on. I spent half my life in hotels. I put on the shower filter. I screw it back in. I have my pliers with me. I mean, I really don't. I don't want to shower in chlorinated water. It's really bad for you. Um, I always have my hydrogen sticks. I usually bring some avocados. I bring bananas with me. I pack them in my suitcase. So I have food when I get there. So I don't have to go oh my gosh, I'm in an airport and what am I going to eat? Well, you know, the only thing I could eat was some something that is not healthy for me. So I just don't do, I bring some food, so I have something. But at any rate, so when I do eat, what I do is um, I drink I drink water about half an hour before I eat. Then that's it. Then right before I eat, I take some probiotics. Ideally, you can take those anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes before you eat. And then I take some digestive enzymes. Um, I take something called Saccharomyces boulardii. Um, that's a that's a yeast. That's a probiotic. Uh, really good for the lower colon. Um, so I'm really in. Sometimes I I do. I always I eat a lot of apple cider vinegar. I have my own brand, but I'm big into apple cider vinegar because that's got something in it called acetic acid, and acetic acid is great for uh, controlling blood sugar and for digestion. Uh, it's amazing stuff. And uh, apple cider vinegar uh, is one of the best ways to, to do to get that. And then I also have that in, in a powder form. And so when I'm traveling, I take my little apple cider vinegar capsule. I get the acetic acid. So I don't drink water with before my meal, 20 minutes, 30 minutes before. And I, again, you know, and then I, that so you never drink water half an hour before, during or half an hour to an hour after I eat. So I usually don't drink any kind of liquid or any kind of water, at least until an hour after I've eaten, sometimes an hour and a half, because if you're well hydrated, you're not going to feel like, oh, I got to eat. I got to drink something. I got to drink something. And of course, the other problem is um, that um, you um, are you're always eating cooked foods that are very dry. You know, you're eating a piece of bread. I mean, it's drying. You know, you want water with that. You want to drink it down with something, you know. Wine's not a very good, you know. I have nothing against wine in as in a principle, but with your meal, that's not a good thing to drink with your meal. Uh, you shouldn't be drinking anything. I never do. But I eat a salad. Well, salad salads and, you know, are full of are full of water. And But when you're eating crackers and you're eating all these cooked foods that have been dried out, and you're eating asparagus that has been cooked and uh, doesn't have the moisture anymore in it. It's dry. And so, yeah, you're thirsty. So, you know, don't do that. So I've trained myself over the years. Um, when I'm going to eat something, I, I'm not sitting here drinking water with it. So the answer to your question finally is, and I just like to talk about this, the digestive process is extremely complicated. And parts of the digestive process actually has a very, very high uh, pH. Your uh, your bile and is very high pH uh, over eight eight point five. Uh, there's something called the duodenum that's pumping out something uh, in the range of eight to maybe almost nine. So parts of the digestive process are very alkaline, and parts, like I said, hydrochloric acid are very low. So I'll say it again: the idea that your body is down, your stomach's down there at all times, a pH two point five. That's just not true. It should you should only be producing this hydrochloric acid to break down your foods when you're eating and when you're chewing, um, and you'll see that hydrochloric acid really doesn't uh, exist uh, too much um, when you uh, doesn't isn't created when you're uh, when you're juicing something and drinking it. Now I love juice. I mean I'm big into juicing. I juice all the time. Um, I love to juice pomegranates with uh, citrus, um, and I treat that just like a citrus one. So the one I usually go with what's in season. I'm uh, I always have bananas every single day, um, and I'm just a big fan of bananas because they're very filling. They're high in potassium that controls your blood pressure, and uh, they're just incredible, incredible food all the way around. 
So uh, they're fair, like I said, they're very fill filling. But I always take spirulina and chlorella. This is my latest book on the kings of all superfoods. People talk about superfoods. For 20 years, we listened to David Wolf talk about superfoods and all that. And there's some great superfoods and uh, and all that. But the two greatest foods in the world, without doubt, are spirulina and chlorella. They're 60% protein. So this is what I use for my protein. So I've been a vegetarian now 44 years, uh, almost going on 45. And um, and I've been a vegan uh, about 25 years because I was a vegetarian for 18 years before I found out about first spirulina. And I never heard of it. And uh, then chlorella. Now, these are 60% protein. And just so you know, meat, you know, meat is around 15, 1, 5, 15% protein on average. You you see some of the leaner cuts will get 18, maybe 19 at the most. Um, you have to go to filet mignon for the really high protein. You might reach 20, 22% at the most, but that's it. And here we got um, 60%. So nothing comes close. And these are pre-digested amino acids, meaning um, they are ready to be formed into proteins immediately. Now, and now let me address that quickly. So two things to say about animal protein. Number one, um, if, if, if you were going to eat raw meat, fish, eggs, or dairy, you wouldn't have a problem. If they were organic and they're fresh, friend of mine or an acquaintance, they have a farm out in... Um, in um Fowlerville and um not Fowlerville um not Fowler um uh, Westphalia and uh, but up in that area and they raise this meat okay they grow all their all they grow stuff to feed the cattle and and the chickens so they do chickens and they do eggs and they do beef and me personally if I was ever going to eat those things meat fish eggs or dairy uh, I would get it from a farm like that, okay? Just because I think that this um, the factory farming and the meat that you find in stores is very suspect, okay? Uh, same with the eggs and dairy, all that stuff. Um, and uh, so you want to go to, you know, a, a farmer, and the way you do it, usually you join the cooperative so they're not selling it to you because, you know, the federal government and their their genius has, has just made raw milk to be such an evil substance. And they go out and they raid these these Amish farmers. It's just terrible. And they're just uh, because they're selling this raw milk and raw cheese and this kind of stuff. Um, so at any rate, the other point you want to make, it, again, if you eat these foods, raw meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. I wouldn't recommend the stuff you get out of the, out of the, out of the stores. But if you go into, if you go to a, a uh, the guy's name is Schaefer. So if you go to the Schaefer farm and you buy it from them, you're going to get a good quality, you know, um, meat and eggs. You know, you see the uh, people that raise chickens and they sell the eggs, you know, maybe they're up the street or whatever. Those are the people that you want to get an egg from. And you want to eat it raw, but we don't eat meat, meat, fish, eggs, or dairy raw. Nobody does. You got sushi. Um, but that's about it. Otherwise, we always cook our animal protein. And here's the problem. The problem with that is that you're, you, you've got to take meat, and uh, which doesn't have a full complement of amino acids. It's got, there's essential amino acids. And when you hear some, the word essential, that's an essential nutrient. What an essential nutrient is, is that you must consume it from something. You must consume it from the outside. Your body can't make it. Your body can make a lot of amino acids. Uh, it can make um, a lot of uh, fatty acids and build them. Um, and we'll get, you know, fat, uh, only a plant can make fat. We can accumulate fat and we can take fatty acids and make them into other chains of fatty acids. But humans and mammals do not create fat. When you go to get fish oil, that fish is eating uh, algae or something else, and it's accumulating the fat within it. So only plants can make fat, okay? That's where you get nuts and seeds, usually the fat's in there. Avocado, I love avocado. I have avocado just about every single day. That's one of my favorite foods. Um, and um, But you've got to eat that fat. You want to consume it from the outside. Um, and so, uh, there's ways to do that. We'll get, you know, as, as a matter of fact, spirulina and chlorella have two of the greatest fats in the world in it. 
Okay, they're six percent fat, and that is ALA, an an linoleic acid for chlorella, and GLA, gamma linoleic acid for spirulina. So that's the kind of food you want to get your fats from. You want to do flax seeds as a good example. Any kind of seeds, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, um, as I said, avocado. You want to get these natural fats, uh, but I don't get them from the animal world. Now, the biggest problem when you have cooked animal protein is that amino acids are held together with what they call peptide bonds. And so when you cook that food, these peptide bonds, what happens, you, you, you've got an animal um, or fish or whatever, and it has made these long, complex chains of proteins. And, um, and so and held together with these peptide bonds. And so now when you eat that food, that animal, you have to break that down, okay, those amino acids, and then you got to reform them into human proteins that we need. You're not going to take a, a, a protein uh, structure, a complex protein from, an, from, a, from a cow or from a chicken or from an egg or from a fish and uh, just start using it in the body because those aren't the protein chains that we need. We need human protein chains. So your body's going to break apart all these amino acids and then reform them. And uh, that takes a lot of energy, and that's one issue. But um, but the uh, the biggest problem is is that you cook it, and so this protein structure becomes a mess. It just doesn't. It's not like it's going to break apart, and now you got amino acids. It turns into this big mess, and it becomes dangerous, very dangerous. And so uh, so you you so you got a. Um, you know, it's not, you're not going to even get the amino acids out of it. It's, it's really something quite dangerous. So, so cooked animal protein, not raw animal protein. And it's certainly not, again, if you get it from nature, uh, you go out and you shoot a deer and you eat the venison. Nobody ever does that. But if you were to do that, you wouldn't have a problem. Uh, back at the turn of the century, not this last century, the last century, uh, around 1904, there was something called the raw milk cure. And everybody was drinking this raw milk and getting cured of all these things. And people wrote a book about it and there was a big, a big fad. But the thing is, is and obviously it wasn't so processed back then, but again, it was the raw milk cure. So you, you know, you were getting all these enzymes from the milk and there are nutrients in the milk. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, it's not like they have now where, you know, I think the, the animal protein that you get very, very contaminated. Um, I, you know, just, this is a side issue. The reason I'm a vegan is not because, uh, this, because it's uh, because of health issues. That's why I'm, I, I just, I don't really get into, I have my thoughts on maybe whether or not you want to have factory farm meat or whether that's ethical and whether you should kill animals and that's ethical. That those are different issues. I do it strictly for health. And I stick to that because I don't want to get sidetracked with these issues about, um, you know, this is unethical to eat animals and to kill them and all that. That's that's a different uh, subject completely. I do it for health reasons, health reasons only. And, um, you know, believe me, you'll be a healthier person if you don't eat meat, fish, eggs or dairy. And I, you know, to me, I love dairy products. I mean, I'm a dairy holic. I'll admit it. You know, just because you're a dairy holic or an alcoholic doesn't mean you drink alcohol anymore and doesn't mean you eat dairy. But there isn't the only kind of dairy product I never could eat. I never liked was buttermilk. Other than that, you name it, cheese, cottage cheese, milk, you know, cream, sour cream, you name it, uh, ricotta cheese. I love it. But I stay away from those things because they're not healthy. And there's uh, also something to be said about the casein that you see, you find in animal, uh, in, in dairy products, and in particular, it's high in cheese, um, that makes, that's physically addictive. So uh, that's got, it's got an enzyme in it that makes it, um, you know, f literally f goes to the same receptor in the brain that heroin goes to and makes you physically addicted to heroin um, and, you um, and, and, and not and casein does the exact same thing. And by the way, uh, a lot of people don't know this. You take something like, uh, you got, sorry, that's my cat. Um, um, you got something, uh, like, uh, um, uh, um, uh, nicotine. Nicotine is not addictive. 
uh, you always say cigarettes are addictive. There's other things in 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 cigarettes that are addictive. But if you ever saw the uh, back um, maybe 15, 20 years ago, the, all the the cigarettes um, uh, producers were up there, the the CEOs, and they asked them, "Is nicotine addictive?" And they asked them one after another after another, and they all said, "No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not." And they were right in front of Congress. Well, nobody ever went after them because they have proven that nicotine is not addictive and it actually has some health benefits. But this smoking of anything is terrible. And there's other reasons people become physically addictive to it, because what they put in those cigarettes is what they're making you addicted to. That's just a little bit of a side. I'm not, and don't ever smoke. I mean, I'm not for anything like that. Lung, lung cancer. If you get lung cancer, um, that's the one that's uh really the hardest one to ever cure yourself of you know, it's almost almost un- uncurable because you destroyed your lungs this is my book on on cancer the cure in the mirror and um and i wrote this book because the most common uh question i i i get um is about cancer for sure because everybody has cancer or they know somebody who has cancer everybody i mean it's just almost, you know, when I I grew up in the 60s, you know, I mean, people had cancer. It wasn't as bad. You know, you, kids never got cancer. Um, you know, we had the movie of the week with the one kid who had cancer and it was unheard of. Now they got entire hospitals dedicated to kids with cancer. So what happened? Well, they destroyed our, um, our food supply and, and processed all our foods. And by the way, it's not this, it, it is, we do not have the same, they do not have this problem nearly as much in Europe as we have in the United States. Um, our food is really contaminated here. Um, and in particular, another one is celiac disease. You know, celiac disease, that's a gluten intolerance. So where did this come from? Once again, absolutely never heard of it ever in my life till 10, 15 years ago. And then it became gluten intolerant. And if you take glutase, which is an amino acid, you'll be able to digest that. But what happened to it? Well, they put Roundup all over it. And that's the culprit, a glycophosphate. That's the culprit is, is Roundup. And they put that, and it's in everything, this glycophosphate. And it's, it's everywhere. And they banned that in Europe. But they have not nearly as bad a contaminated food over there, I'm, I'm sad to say, that we have over here. So, which leads me to know the source of your food, you know, know where that's coming from. I mean, I go to the produce section when I go to Meyer and when I go to Kroger and I really, you know, I tell people that I haven't bought anything out of a box, a jar or a can for 40 years. I mean, you might a jar of peanut butter. I'm not, you know, I stay away from peanut butter because it makes you fat. Um, it could be other problems with it, but, but something like that, maybe some tahini somewhere, but a box, a jar, a can. And if I did, you know, the, the idea that you're going to go out and buy a, a frozen pizza and cook it. I mean, you don't know what's in that thing. So know the, you know, what's in that can of tomato soup. I don't care if it's the real, you know, if it's organic, at least you can say, I can see the ingredients, but you know, Campbell soup or something. I mean, these are just major corporations. And honestly, in the end, you don't know what's in that can of soup. So I go to the produce department because when I pick up some kale, I know it's kale. And when I pick up parsley, when I pick up uh, asparagus or apples um, or bananas or anything else, I know what it is. And then I don't take it home and cook it. But even if you did, there's a huge difference between home cooked food, you know, that you cooked and processed food. I mean, processed food is just poison. And I highly, you know, fast foods. I mean, I, you know, I grew up um, eating a lot of, you know, fast foods, McDonald's, not a huge amount. Um, I wasn't like really going out there all the time with, uh, you know, going to McDonald's and all that, but I ate my share of it. And, you know, you think it's just fast food. I mean, we know so much more now than we knew then. And I, I wasn't, I might, you know, I grew up in meat and potatoes and in the sixties and, um, my mom was not the best cook. We had home cooked foods, but you know, so much, you know, came out of a jar and we, you know, you don't know where this, or, or can, you know, I used to do these baked beans, Hungry Jack, you know, they had the special can on top, two cans, and you put them together, and it was really, and it's just like, you know, that's the way, and it was really my my coach in high school and track, he says, uh, don't eat this kind of, uh, tr- this kind of garbage, and, um, you know, like, uh, and, and like Coke, and, um, 
and 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 chips and all this kind of stuff because it's really bad for you. And I honestly had never heard anything like that in my life. And that was already in high school. I never I never equated eating with, you know, with performance or health, eating and health, eating and in running performance. I was the best. I went to Eastern High School. I was the best runner in my school. And that, that's the first time I even heard anything like that. So they're not at you. We're not educated as a country on what we should eat. And, uh, you know, I've dedicated my whole life, obviously, my professional life to um, educating uh, people on health and water and what to eat and what not to eat. Um, so um, uh, know the source of your food. Know where that can, what's in that can if you're going to buy anything out of that can. And But the best place to get it, of course, is the garden. You know, grow your own food. Um, I like gardening, you know, uh, a lot of people don't, but you know, when I go out to get some spinach in the summer and my tomatoes and my arugula, my favorite food, one of them, uh, you know, I know what I'm getting. I grew up, there it is. I know what I got. And so, um, you know, it's all about knowing the source of your food. What are you going to put? What are you going to put in this temple? What this is the temple of God, and you should honor the temple by putting the right fo foods in it and putting in the foods in it that God grew. And God grew, you know, as I said, God grows an apple, and He didn't grow that that can that that Campbell's you know chicken soup, chicken noodle. He didn't grow that, um, and you don't know where that came from. And so, if you really want to be on that path to health, then it's about putting those things in your body. So um, just so you know what I eat, I eat um, fruit for lunch. Um, I don't eat until noon. I want to, I go, I so, kind of fast every day for at least 12, usually 15 hours every single day. So I eat at night about six, six o'clock, six 30. And then I don't eat again until noon the following day. And, uh, but it gives you a chance to, the, hel the healthiest thing you can do for yourself is fast. Stop eating and clear out your body. It, fasting allows you to rest, repair, and cleanse the body. Okay. It's always good to go on a fast. I, I, right before Easter, I went on a three-day fast. And, um, you know, I am i didn't get any headaches, rash, diarrhea, fatigue, which are the symptoms of fasting, but because those are the poisons coming out of your body when you go on a fast. Um, and that's what all disease lives on. What You know, and by the way, what is a toxin? You become very toxic. So I always say, had, H-A-D, hydrate your body, alkalize your body, because it's probably going to be acidic. And that you measure that through your urine and then detoxify your body. Those are the keys to health. H-A-D, hydrate, alkalize, detoxify. And what is a toxin? A toxin is something that doesn't belong in the body. And there are very mild toxins. Um, and then there are very serious toxins, such as heavy metals, herbicides, pesticides, uh, benzene. You go fill up with your car with gasoline. You're, you're breathing in uh, trihalomethanes. VOCs, volatile organic chemicals, hydrocarbons, that's what's in the gas, uh, uh, benzene. You're breathing it in. You ride behind a school bus uh, or a truck and you can smell the fume. You're breathing it in and that's getting right into your bloodstream. So uh, you, you want to constantly detoxify these things and because that's what disease lives on. It, when you're, you're sick, you know two things about your body. Okay, they are. You know that your body is acidic, it's a low pH and you know your body is toxic. It's full of toxins. So um, that's what you always want to do is constantly keep yourself hydrated. You want to alkalize it. I recommend ionized water and raw foods and detoxification. Oh, okay. Um, someone here asked if you could talk a couple minutes about GMO. Okay. Well, anything that is, uh, you know, genetically modified um, at foods... Uh, by the way, just not uh, first of all, what what are um, what's what are commonly genetically GMO foods? Well, soy. Stay away from soy. It's one of the worst foods you can put in your body. I can come up with a bunch of reasons if why. They're organic. They're not GMO. Um, well, it's true. It's hard to find. Uh, I would say if you want to go to this website, um, which is uh, non it's non GMO dot I don't know if it's non GMO dot org. Um, but it has to do with, um, uh, if you just look up non-GMO and then go to this organization, they'll tell you all the top foods 
that are in that are out there. Um, there's other reasons not to drink, not to eat soy, other than uh, just it's just really bad for you. It's got phytic acid; it interferes with your thyroid. It's got phytohemoglutin, uh, which is essentially blood glue. Uh, it's huge amounts of estrogen. It's the wrong type of estrogen for the body. It's got a, a positive spin to it, unlike any other food. If you look at all raw foods, they have a negative spin, uh, ionic spin to them. So um, I, there's you know many reasons not to eat it. Just besides that, um, I don't ever eat tempeh. I don't even I don't ever eat. Uh, um, uh, any kind of soy product. Uh, um, so uh, um, I can't think of the one that's always out there, but I just don't eat it. I don't, I don't even touch it. My wife loves soy um, and she's always eating soy product, but not a huge amount, but uh, I just don't even touch it. So, but genetically modified, I wouldn't touch a genetically modified food, which is goes back to um, knowing what's in your food, like, you know, per, uh, uh, trans fats, parsley, hydrogenated oils. Um, you know, these are just poison, any kind of seed oil, um, that all of a sudden everybody discovered these seed oils are really, really bad for you. Well, you know, I mean, corn oil, vegetable oil. I mean, I don't even know where do these come from? Where, do, how do they make these? And you want to stay away from this stuff. And, and one of the most poisonous fr foods is fried foods of any kind. Don't never fry your food. Um, there's some healthy oils like olive oil isn't bad. And, uh, you know, flaxseed oil. Um, I'm not a big fan because it, it goes rancid very quickly. But you can eat. There's some good oils. You got to watch it. I, I eat, eat, do eat oil very sparingly. I don't eat much at all. I don't even eat too much oil because, you know, you don't want to. Uh, I'm kind of a little bit wary of where it comes from. Even the olive oil, so much of it's fake. Um, and when we go back, you know, you, you really want to get something, you know, but genetically modified foods, um, get the list. Another one's uh, red beets. Uh, they're all genetically modified. Um, you look on the list I mean, you'll see what's out there. Uh, they got these target beets. They're white and, re and red. Uh, they're not GMO, but um, yeah, find out what's what's GMO, what's been genetically modified. I mean, they're taking genes and moving them around in that food. That doesn't sound too natural to me. Um, just, you know, stop, what, stop messing with our food and, uh, you know, please, but they won't do it just like they keep putting fluoride in the water. And that's really a bad sub is very poisonous substance, fluoridated water. Um, but please stop doing this to our food. Uh, but they're not going to, and, uh, I guess it's a lot of money. Um, you know, they feed the cattle corn, uh, cattle are, 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 and cows are, gr uh, uh, grass grazers, they're grazing animals. They want to eat uh, clover and and grass and this kind of stuff, not corn. Um, and yet, that's what they feed them. They feed them a, a kind of corn that human human beings cannot um, digest. It's called yellow dent number two. Um, so, at any rate, uh, uh, you know, sweet corn. Even that I've hear, heard that that's become very uh, genetically modified. I don't know for sure. Most of the corn, I don't think the um, wheat, wheat has been genetically modified, but I think the problem with wheat um, is this Roundup they put on it, sprayed on it for so many years that it has changed it. And we've hybridized it so much that it's, I think also could possibly be responsible for these, um, these uh, problems with, uh, um, you know, the, 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 um, uh, people getting the gluten intolerance, the celiac disease. And by the way, just so you know, there's a woman, um, her name is Stephanie Senek, and she's a PhD doctor. And um, she's the one who discovered that glyphosate uh, in the body, which is poisonous, it, it your body recognizes it as glycine, uh, which is an amino acid. And um, and and uh, it looks it, it appears very much like and so your body absorbs this and starts using this in, in the metabolic pathways in the human body as thinking it's glycine and it's not it's glyphosate. So this is really uh, very, very dangerous. And she did the work on it. And you can look her up, Stephanie Seneth, I, 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 Seneth, uh, I, I think it's S-E-N-E-F-F. -E -F. You could look that up, but she's amazing. What an amazing woman. And she's she's. You know, I would guess in her 60s. I don't really know. But they went after her. Once she started really coming out, people started listening. They didn't like it. 
So you can go look her up on YouTube and listen to some of her talks. She is really smart. I like, I have, admire her quite a bit. She's done a lot of work and she's not the only one, but uh, um, anyway, so yeah, avoid the GMOs. Any, any other questions? I know we're getting a little time. I didn't want to just talk the entire time. Any other questions you guys have? Or? Well, Chris, what about if we can't have alkaline, what can we have? Can we make our own good water somehow? I can't if hear you, your question. If you don't have a, um, access to alkaline water, uh, is there something you can do with your own water to make it better? Um, well, uh, obviously, first thing I'm going to say is make sure it's filtered. Um, I'm on a well up here. In, I'm in DeWitt. And I do, uh, thankfully, I have a well. And I don't have city water. Um and uh, I would filter it, first of all. And then you can use these hydrogen sticks. I sell them. Uh, you can find them on Amazon. And you just look up hydrogen stick. And you put that in your water and you shake it up. And that'll help alkalize it. And um, it will give it a very small... It's like kind of a really... I call it a poor man's water ionizer. Um, and so, um, you know, that's another thing you can do. It's a nut. I would r really avoid all the any kind of purified water, which is um, when you go into the supermarket because the government says so. You you if you see anything that says drinking water, never buy that and never 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 drink it because this is purified water. It's it's really ridiculous. So to call it that, but so um, you want to uh, drink like I said, uh, spring water is okay um or well filtered tap water and then you could put the alkaline sticks in it um you know for instance when i'm traveling i get a lot, a lot of people i go to the hotel they give me these little um bottles of purified water and uh so what am i going to do well i have a product that i sell that's calcium it's called calcium althreonate so it's a type of calcium that's got an amino acid that actually will help your body absorb it get into your bones that kind of thing and so I take some of that and put it in there and shake it up. And then I put it in my alkaline stick. So it the main, well, without getting into great details, you're drinking a substance that's going to leach minerals out of your body, purified water. So now you put in the calcium and that balances it out. So we got now we got a buffer. So it's not going to steal your minerals and it's going to take those minerals in there. And then use the alkaline stick. Now that's what I would do. That's what I always do. Um, I think the most valuable thing you can ever buy yourself for a product would be a water ionizer. Um, you know, a, a, a ionized water is is a very powerful antioxidant. It has three antioxidant qualities: um, hydrogen, a negative ORP, and an abundance of electrons, which are free radical scavenger. It's very alkaline. All disease lives in an acid environment within your body, and not in an alkaline environment. And um, it is it got very small water molecule clusters. And um, and they're structured. They're meaning some people call ionized water structured water, and uh, so they're in a hexagon shape. Okay, so hexagon you'll see the hexagon throughout nature. Um, like for instance, a beehive um, is always uh, a bee. You know, you see the the honeycomb. Uh, it's always six sided, and uh, you just you'll see it everywhere in nature. A lot of people use it as their logos these days. But uh, it's very common. You look at a snake skin. You look at insect eyes. The reason is, is because that is the most energy efficient shape in the universe is the hexagon. That's six sided. So this is six sided. So it's very small water molecule clusters, very penetrating. They, they hydrate the body well. They hydrate your cells. And then they push out all the things that don't belong in your body, which we refer to as toxins. So it's very detoxifying. So that's the best thing you can do is drink alkaline ionized water. Uh, and then, you know, and by the way, the only difference between raw foods and vegetables in ionized water is that they're identical to one another in every single way. All these qualities, except ionized water doesn't have any nutrients and raw foods do. But otherwise, they have the same qualities, negative ORP. They will have, especially when they're fresh, hydrogen They'll have a negative charge, negative ORP, reduces the oxidation of the body. You'll see that they're alkalizing and they all are also are detoxifying, whereas cooked foods always deposit their toxins into the body. And um, 
the more processed the food is, the worse it is for you. There's no, just no as simple as that. Anything else? Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? That was so awesome, Bob. Every time you talk to us, we we learn something new. Okay, yeah. <laughs> or that's get what re it... reminded of the things we forgot. So <laughs> Yeah, you know, and just stick to that raw food lifestyle. And it is a lifestyle. And the more you do it, the more you'll, you know, just get used to doing. I, you know, I want a nice big burger. You know, I want a pizza. That's my, I would love a pizza. Boy, if there was a pizza track. But those things are just not healthy for us. So, you know, you do your pizza you know, you have your one slice a month, you know, you have your cheat, you know, you don't want to become, uh, I've never said to myself, I'm never going to eat raw cook foods again, because it all becomes psychological. The only reason you put anything into your body is a hundred percent up here. It's the only reason you do it. You, you love the taste of it and just don't let the taste of your food become your, your demise and your destiny. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I always enjoy it. I always want to talk about health. You guys are great. Yeah. I mean, Cricket started the raw food groups uh, lifestyle. You know, I we, we were over at the other uh, church, First Christian, for 18 years. And then, yeah. I, you know, so I was just going on, uh, you know, I, I remember walking into that about 1998. And I'm going, raw foods? <laughs> I, I was already into uh, ionized water. And they made all these dishes. And then... Um, and they started, um, you know, I was eating all these dishes and they were just delicious. And I'm like going, these are all raw. And so, and I, the uh, Hiawatha was the first person that introduced me to, to to not raw foods, really, as much as sprouts. She dropped off these sprouts for me to sell, right? So I'm buying sprouts for her, from her and I'm selling them. And then I just thought, why do I want to eat a sprout? And and I looked it up and I was getting and I saw enzymes and I got a book on enzymes from Edward Howell and I went oh you want the enzymes for this so that's how it all started for me was that that's but, great you know raw is the law and you guys are doing a great <laughs> thing there you guys like are, that. <laughs> yeah yeah and you you guys are doing just you know you're doing this once a month it's just fantastic because this is what keeps yeah. people going and like why am I doing this and you know and great chefs. Um, I was born to cook, but I never cook anymore. But guys, people, you know, ladies like Cricket and Miko. Okay. Me, remember Miko, yeah. Michelle. And uh, she, I saw her not too long ago. She is fantastic. I mean, she brought some little, uh, some kind of dessert thing that she made. Unbelievable. She, she's doing it. And she, you know, you just got to stick with it. And a lot of people don't stay with it through the years. Uh, Matt Monarch yeah. kind of went went away. Paul Neeson's still doing it. Paul Neeson's still done the raw food lifestyle. So, uh, yeah, yeah, they they yeah. Uh, they kind of break away. I don't say Matt's, uh, you know, he's parsley raw. I don't know where he is, but uh, he yeah. was eating eggs for a while. But anyway, you don't want to eat from the animal world. Uh, yeah. And raw raw is the law. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Bob. Good night. Okay. Thanks for having me and stay yeah. healthy. All right. Take care. All right. All right, bye God bye. bless. All right, bye-bye.